Hello and welcome to St. Peter's Zion Lutheran Churches. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany. The Old Testament reading for this, the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany, is from Genesis chapter 45. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years. And there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and Lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children, and your children's children, and your flocks and herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you. There are yet five years of famine to come so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin are, and also see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt, and of all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. And our epistle comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Why am I in danger every hour? I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die every day. What do I gain if, humanly speaking, I fought with beasts at Ephesus? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Wake up from your drunken stupor, as is right, and do not go on sinning, for some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame, but someone will ask, How are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies, and what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body, as he has chosen, to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind. The glory of the earthly is of another. 
There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For star differs from star in glory. So is it with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, But I say to you who hear, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. For one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back, as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good major, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you. Mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended against all adversity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today's message is based on the Gospel reading from Luke 6. It isn't really odd or unusual to hear Jesus calling us to love one another. After all, he said elsewhere that love is the fulfillment of the law. It's the fulfillment of God's commandments. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Which is to say, keeping God's commandments isn't simply about your actions, what you do or what you do not do. Rather, it's about your heart, whether or not you do what you do ought of love for God and love for your neighbor. It is with that understanding of the commandments that St. Paul later went on to say, If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. So the assumption is that it doesn't really strike any of us odd or unusual to hear Jesus call us to love another. But the thing is, here in Luke 6, he calls us well beyond our comfort zone. He says, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. He goes on to say, If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. The reason these words of Jesus are so hard for us is that loving our enemies is a completely 
a natural thing for us to do. I mean, do you find it easy to love those who hate you, or to bless those who curse you, or to pray for those who abuse you? Or is it more to your liking to collect debts in life, to do everything in your power to make people pay for what they owe you? These are, of course, rhetorical questions. But they are important questions because they show us that what God commands is beyond our ability to accomplish. He sets the bar so high not to frustrate us and to drive us away from Him, but to drive us away from ourselves. The fact is, God often calls us in life to the impossible. Even faith itself, trust in God, the call to love Him with our whole heart, mind, and soul, is impossible for us. Over and over again, the Scriptures tell us that the things of God are spiritually discerned, and therefore it is the Holy Spirit who must change our hearts from unwilling to willing. As St. Paul says, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Since the things of God are folly to us, and since they are discerned spiritually, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. God often calls us in life to the impossible. To trust in Christ is impossible for us, but with God, all things are possible. The call to love your enemies as yourself is a part of that call too. The impossibility of it is all too clear to us. Our hearts are so often fractured and broken. They're damaged from years of abuse and hurt, even more. They're scarred by sin and evil. So how are we to begin to love our enemies and to bless those who have cursed us, to pray for those who have abused us? Well, at the end of this section of Luke's Gospel, Jesus directed his disciples and us to the power that enables us to do these things that are impossible for us including loving our enemies. He says, God is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Elsewhere in the Bible, we're told that we love because He first loved us. As it is with love, so it is with mercy. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. As I said before, when we view our sin in our sinfulness as relatively insignificant. We also tend to think of the gospel in a similar way. In other words, people see themselves as only slightly sinful, also see themselves as only needing a small measure of God's grace and forgiveness in Christ Jesus. Conversely, as we come to realize and confess our utter lostness apart from Christ. We see just how amazing God's grace and forgiveness in Christ are towards us. St. Paul reminds us of where we came from before we found ourselves standing in this grace and forgiveness of God. Consider your calling, brothers, he says. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. Martin Luther once said, when I look at myself, I do not see how I can be saved. But when I look at Christ, I do not see 
power can be lost. The power to love our enemies doesn't come from us, from deep down in our hearts. Rather, it comes from outside of us, from Christ who loved us, who loved you unto death, even death on a cross. The mercy that God shows to us, to you, in giving his only begotten Son to die for you, is a mercy that can, by God's grace, flow from you to others, even to your enemies. God says, Jesus is kind to the ungrateful and evil. Two men stood before God one day to pray. One of them said, I thank you that I'm not like that other man. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this man who is here with me today, praying. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. The other man stood humbly before God. In fact, he wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven. He just stood there, beating his breast in contrition and remorse. He said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Unlike the first man, who saw himself as worthy of God's love and mercy, this man knew that if he were to receive anything, anything at all from God, it would have come from God's kindness. The story I just told you also comes from Luke's Gospel. After encountering the two men in the temple, Jesus said, I tell you, this man, the second man, went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. When I look at myself, I do not see how I can be saved. But when I look at Christ, I do not see how I can be lost. Likewise, when I look at my enemy, the one who has cursed me and even abused me, I do not see how I can love him or her. But when I look at Christ, I do not see how I cannot. I say that because the mercy and forgiveness that God has given me in Christ is greater than anything that I could ever ask or even think. Lord of glory, you have bought us with your lifeblood as the price, never grudging for the lost ones that tremendous sacrifice. Give us faith to truth you boldly. Hope to stay our souls on you, but oh, best of all your graces, with your love, our love renew. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God just pass all understanding. Give your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For tested faith like that of Joseph who endured hardship and struggle, yet believed it would come to good, and that God would bring all things to completion according to his purposes in Christ. The new Adam, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all pastors, missionaries, and church workers, that they would be faithful and compassionate in their service through all members of our congregation, that we may be blessed to hear your word and to serve our neighbors in Christ's name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all parents who have brought their children to Christ in the waters of holy baptism, that they would continue to bring them to Christ faithfully in the divine service, so that he may continue to take them in his arms and bless them through his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for love that expects not reward, but serve those in need. For an end to all bitterness and strife among us, for forgiveness between each other, even as Christ's blood has covered our sins before God's heavenly throne. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For civil authority and those responsible to God, for the welfare of our nation, state, and community, that they would pursue faithfully the cause of justice and protect life from beginning to natural end our first responders and those who defend us here or abroad. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for all who suffer, the sick, and those troubled in body or soul, that God would comfort them with his grace and heal them according to his will, and for the dying, and those who mourn, that they may know peace at the last. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you will bring all things to completion according to your order and time. When Christ comes and all the dead are raised, number us, we pray, among the saints in glory, clothing the perishable with the imperishable and bringing us into eternal life. Through the Saint Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.